What's going on everybody? I'm John Turner. Welcome back to Woods to Table. As you can see behind me, it is a gray, nasty, cold winter day and um, there's not a lot going on right now. Deer season ended some time ago, waterfowl season just ended, and we got a while before turkey season comes around. So we're bored. Um, not a lot going on and looking for something to do to still get us into the outdoors. We have a beach trip coming up that gives us a chance to go out and maybe do some surf fishing. I have no idea what would be biting this time of year. That water's gonna be awful cold. And I know one thing, I do not wanna be wading out uh, to try to get my bait out a little bit further into some deeper water. The water is cold as it's gonna be. So, got some time on my hands. Why not build one of those air cannons that blast your bait out a couple hundred yards off the shore and uh, see if we can do some good. So we're gonna show you how to do that today. And then in a couple weeks, we'll take you down and do a little bit of surf fishing see what happens. Here you can see the materials that we're going to use here. The barrel is going to be made out of an inch and a half PVC. Um, the air chamber is going to be made out of a three inch PVC. You got an end cap to step that three inch down to the one and a half. Um, a ball valve which will essentially serve as our trigger mechanism. An end cap for that three inch and two 90 degree uh, inch and a half elbow joints. As far as the tools that you need, we've got everything right here. This is going to be a very simple uh, build. It shouldn't take us too long and um, we'll go ahead and get started. And here you can see the basic design or layout with all the parts put together, at least how I envision it. Okay, so now let's cut some four inch connector pieces out of our inch and a half diameter PVC for our lower assembly. Okay, so now we've got our connector pieces cut. And the next thing we wanna do is make up all of our joints with primer and PVC cement. Okay, so now the main assembly is done, um, ball valve is in place and we're letting that cure and now it's time to cut down the three inch piece, uh, the air cylinder to a little bit more manageable size. Okay, so if there is an intricate part to this entire assembly, it's getting the uh, tire valve or the air valve installed correctly on the end cap so that it is airtight uh, and doesn't leak. So we've got to get the whole size exactly right so that this thing goes on there properly. I'm using a 0.53 inch diameter uh, rim hole and two inch long tire valve that I picked up at an Ace Hardware. Um, so we're gonna start boring this hole and then we'll complete the rest of the assembly. Okay, so tire valve is in place. Air chamber's been cut down. Uh, the main assembly with the ball valve is all ready to go. And I think we're ready for final assembly. So we'll just attach the end cap onto one end of the air chamber um, and then insert the barrel and the air chamber into the main lower assembly. assembly is complete. Uh, that whole process probably took less than 30 minutes if I'm interrupted, so it's very, very simple. We're going to pressure test the seals today and make sure we're not leaking air anywhere, and if that's good, we're good to go. We can proceed on to the rest of the steps. And if you wanted to, you could stop here. Uh, everything else that we're doing is probably considered optional. We're going to show you how to put some interchangeable uh, legs or a mount for the legs on here. If you want to do sand spikes, you can do that. Um, we're also going to show you how to make a container or a holder for those 10 inch tubes where you'll freeze the actual projectiles for your bait uh, and store those in your freezer. Uh, we'll paint it up really nice and we'll even add a muzzle brake on at the end for absolutely no other reason than it's going to look really cool. <laughs> okay. So it's a little bit of a workout. We pumped this thing up to 80 PSI and it's holding. Uh, so it looks like the seals are good. Now let's try the trigger mechanism and just see what happens. Okay, so now we're gonna make and install the muzzle brake and this absolutely serves no functional purpose whatsoever other than I think it's gonna look cool. 
Um, so what we'll do is just grab a drill bit, any diameter, and just start drilling holes in this thing at random spots all around the outside of this um, one and a half inch connector, then we'll attach it to the main assembly. Okay, so in moving uh, the main assembly around, it became pretty obvious that um, the air cylinder and the barrel want to move a little bit, and that concerns me uh, because you don't want these seals to be put under uh, stress down here because this has to remain absolutely airtight. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a spacer to hold the air cylinder and the barrel apart at just the right distance. We're going to use a couple of scrap pieces of three inch and one and a half, which match these two components as our stencils and trace that around um, just a, a piece of leftover uh, three to two by six that I had here. We'll cut that out with a jigsaw and we'll attach it. You got a banana? Okay. Okay, so we cut the spacer. Um, maybe it wasn't my best work with a jigsaw. Is this piece perfect? No. Does it have the cleanest and tightest lines? Also no. Will it get the job done? Maybe. Just like that. <laughs> so, we're gonna put this thing on here. I bet it'll probably do what it's supposed to do, just holding these um, two pieces apart. And I found some of this um, kind of galvanized uh, banding garage so I'm just going to use this to drape over the top and hold these two um, they basically hold the block in place um, top and bottom so we'll just screw this on wrap it all the way around wrap it all the way around it all tight together not going to place cut that with some tin snips move on to the next piece okay so now what we want to do is take this five foot section of inch and a half and just cut um, 10 inch sections out of it and these are going to be our bait holes okay so now let's build the container that we're going to set inside the freezer with all of our molds for our frozen bait um, inside it. So we're just basically going to take a piece of uh, two by six treated lumber and cut that down into um, two 12 inch pieces, which would be the pieces that run lengthwise, and then two six inch pieces, which would be the pieces, um, which would be the height of the Okay, so that went together pretty easily. Now the next step is just to drill some holes. I've got a two and a half inch hole saw. Um, it doesn't matter if this doesn't fit the one and a half inch pipe exactly. It just needs to be big enough to slide um, the molds down through the top piece. And we'll put another hole, a much smaller hole down at the bottom that'll help uh, cradle it and hold it in place upright. Okay, so now we're going to complete the bait molds by just taking this, uh, the 10 inch pieces of one and a half that we cut earlier and just um, priming and then using rubber cement or PVC cement in order to affix the end caps on the end. Okay, so for the next phase, um, we need to put some kind of legs on this thing. 
and um, I thought about putting some actual legs on it with feet that sprawled out to the side. We're going to the beach, so I'm going to make something that mounts sand spikes on here um, that'll actually be interchangeable. If we wanted to come back and put legs on it, or you certainly could. Uh, the benefit to this is when we remove the front spike, it's actually going to double as a rod holder, so get some versatility out of it as well. In order to make the connection that's going to permanently mount to the air canister, um, where we can either insert our interchangeable legs or uh, sand spikes in this case, we've got our, this is similar to our air canister, uh, we've got some four inch uh, connection pipes that go down to a two inch diameter, kind of in a Y shape. And this is going to fit very easily over the top of our air canister, but it doesn't fit it exactly. So we're going to want to cut this um, just to remove the excess material down along this line just outside of this um, two inch connection. Okay, so the general idea here is once you cut the excess off of the four, feet, four inch connector, um, it's gonna sit, kind of cradle that three inch uh, air, air container on the bottom of our air tank. Okay, so we're ready to attach the, uh, the mount to the bottom side of our um, air cylinder. And we noticed that in just fitting this piece on that we cut out earlier, uh, there's a little bit too much of a gap back here at the back end because the diameters of the two pieces were just different. And so we've cut some spacers out of that extra four inch um, connector material that we had earlier, the same material that in which we cut this um, this mount. So we're going to go ahead and glue those spacers onto our mounts and then affix those uh, to the bottom of the air cylinder and then we'll be ready to go. Alright, so now we've attached our spacers to the bottom of our, uh, of our mounts for our sand spikes. So we'll go ahead and affix these to the main assembly and then we'll be ready to make our sand spikes. We'll be all finished. Okay, so the last step in the final assembly is just cutting out our sand spikes that'll serve as our feet. Uh, and then we'll attach that to the main assembly, which is drying back right behind me. Um, and we'll get it painted up. We should be ready to go to the beach next weekend. Okay, so we finally made it to the beach. We got in here late tonight. The kids are finally in, I should probably lower my voice. The kids are finally in bed. <laughs> if I didn't do it, the blender would. Finally in bed and we're down here for Sam's dance competition, but that doesn't mean that Ryan and I can't sneak out to the beach. And I have no idea what's gonna be out there this time of year, what's gonna be biting. Probably nothing, because it's freezing cold. But it's a good excuse for us to try out our bait cannon. And if nothing's biting, it's okay, because we can still blast up as far offshore as we can. So um, we just need to make our, I don't know what you call them, bait missiles, whatever they are. Um, so we're gonna blend up some chum tonight, put our rigs down into our bait molds, and then fill it with the chum, put that in the freezer overnight, and then we'll get out there in the surf tomorrow, and see what happens. All right, so come on in and check out what we got here. Um, in this particular rig, we just got a, uh, a wire leader um, with two um, kind of offset one alt hooks and a little bit of mullet, uh, cut mullet. I've got a three ounce sinker on here, so we're just going to go ahead and feed these down into the bait mold um, that we made. Drop those down in there. This is all pretty rigid, so I'm not too worried about tangles. Feed our second hook down in there. Mono wire. And just leave a little bit sticking out the top which is what we're actually going to attach to the rod. Well, I'll take this all the stinky mix that we just made. Pour that down in here, fill this up to the top, and then we'll put that into our mold overnight, let it freeze. It looks horrible. The worse it looks, the better the fish like it.
is it? <laughs> How did that ever get in there in the first place? It is far too, oh, there we go. What is going on? This is not physics. <laughs> this is not physics. Are you still filming? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's so terrible. All right, y'all, here we go. We're heading down boardwalk here at the beach. It's cold, but it is beautiful down here. Let's see if we can get this bait cannon to work. All right, we're gonna wrap it up, because I'm freezing. I should probably have waders on or something. I think my feet are gonna turn blue. Um, nothing biting today, that's probably not surprising because it's early February. Water is absolutely frigid, but this thing worked. It went out there probably 150 yards. Hopefully you can see it in the video. Um, I put kind of a moderate air pressure in that thing. I'm not trying to push it too much. Um, I'm not sure what all of the seals can hold, but we got to about 100 PSI today, um, and the bait went out there. So, uh, did what it was supposed to do, uh, melted, entangled, and then we had a ball. Uh, kids went inside screaming and crying, so I got some time fishing myself. We're going to try this tomorrow when it's a little bit warmer. Now, we're out. <laughs>